Hello, thanks for joining me today. I'm here in the Bone Biomechanics Lab at Texas A&M University where we run all kinds of mechanical tests here. We do everything from tension tests, compression tests, three and four point bending tests. So today we're going to run a simple three point bending test on an excised rat femur. So to give you a little bit of information about this femur, to pick it up we're going to use our gloves here just to be safe. This femur was actually given a bone loss drug treatment. So if you remember the Sally Field commercials from a long time ago, she used to advertise this drug called Beniva. What Beniva is is a bisphosphonate and what that does is it slows down the amount of bone loss. So the drug that this bone was treated with is a new drug called Zoledronic Acid and it's supposedly much more potent than Boniva. So what we're going to do in this lab is we'll test to see how strong this bone is compared to bones in the study that weren't given the drug. So to do that, we can use equipment called an Instron, which does compression or tension and loads this bone in the orientation that we want. So what we'll do here is we'll take the bone, which is about 20 or so millimeters long, and we'll put it on this Instron machine here. And we'll load it just so that the bone overhangs and the load cell just touches the bone in the middle in the middle of the bone in the mid shaft. So just for a little background information, we use a span length here of 18 millimeters. Now that's pretty standard in, in the bone, the biology, mechanical testing world. But ASTM standards recommends using a 16 to 1 length to, length to thickness ratio. What that means is if the thickness is 2 millimeters, like the thickness of this bone, you should use a span length here of 32 millimeters. But we don't have 32 millimeters to work with on this bone. Like I said, we only have 20 or so. So we have to compromise, and the compromise that we've accepted in the field is to use an 18 millimeter span length. So what we'll do, if we we'll go ahead and zoom in close here, we're going to preload this bone to just the slightest bit of preload, so about 0.1 newton if we can get there. So about point Okay, so about 0 0.02 newtons. So what this does is it just settles the bone into the testing machine. All right, we'll go ahead and run the test. I've already input all the parameters, all the dimensions and all the all the the, the, the lengths and the diameters and everything. So we'll just go ahead and run this test. And I want you to take note of the shape of the force displacement curve that you're going to get here. You're going to notice that it's going to look a lot like the stress strain shapes that we've learned about in our books. And I'll tell you a little bit about transforming those force displacements to stress strains after the test. So with our preload, we'll balance our load. So we start at zero. We'll balance our gauge length. So we start at zero. And we'll go ahead and just start the test. So there's a little bit of noise in the beginning. It kind of bumps and bounces around a little bit. But you see that this is the elastic portion of our curve, which means if you stop the test now, the bone would theoretically go back to its original shape, original material properties with no permanent deformation. So we see a little toe here. This is pretty normal in the rat bone, but still we're in our elastic region here. So now we're yielding. It's this place that we're going from plastic, from, from elastic to plastic deformation. So we're yielding, we're bouncing around a little bit. It's not as pretty as a steel test, but it's pretty close to what we see in our book. So we're at about 35 newtons. So you've noticed this little bitty bone is actually quite strong. It's already holding up to 50 newtons. So let's continue to go. Up to 72 newtons. So it's pretty strong. Still going strong. And remember, for every newton, it's about a fifth of a pound, right? So I think of a newton as like holding an apple in your hand. It's about the weight of an apple. So for 100 newtons right here, that's about 20 pounds of force. So that's pretty strong for this little bitty bone. And I may have misspoke earlier. It doesn't look like that earlier bump in the road was a, was a yielding. It looks like it was more of just a settling in of the bone into the fixture here. So it looks like we might actually be yielding now. It looks like the curve is beginning to flatten out. That's usually pretty indicative of a yield point. 
So we'll, we'll kind of float at this load for a little while. Things will settle down and then eventually the bone will fracture and we'll call that the fracture load. So note the shape as we're zoomed out. It's looking very much like those stress strain shapes that we see in our books. All right, so you saw the bone fracture and you see what happens to the shape. It drops all the way down to zero. So that's a three-point bend test. We do these all the time in the lab. We test the bone until it fractures. So that kind of test is called a destructive test because we completely destroy the bone. So that's one advantage of using animal studies because you can't do destructive tests in humans for obvious reasons. So I'll leave you in this video with a challenge. We know the span length of this fixture is 18 millimeters and we know from the from the machine here that the maximum force was about 204 newtons. It gives us this readout right here. So 204 newtons is what this thing experienced. So I challenge you to find the maximum stress that occurs in this bone. So recall the equations we use for stress and bending and recall the shear and moment diagrams and see what you can come up with. We'll talk about that answer next time. And as always, thank you for joining me and stay curious.